In response to privacy concerns, governments have drafted new data protection laws which are crucial for everyone who works with data to know about. In this video, we'll talk about GDPR. Again, this is a huge area of policy and law which we can't hope to cover fully in this course, but this video will give you a rapid overview. The most important law around data and data processing is the EU General Data Protection Regulation, or GDPR, which came into force in 2018. The aim of GDPR is, quoting the EU, to protect all EU citizens from privacy and data breaches in today's data-driven world. You've probably seen screens like this. GDPR is not the only EU law affecting data. The so-called cookie law requires you to consent to a website collecting cookie data. This falls under a different law called the e-privacy directive. GDPR is much broader. Its key aspects are that it has global scope. GDPR applies to all companies processing the personal data of EU residents, regardless of the company's location. GDPR legislation imposes penalties, so breaches of GDPR can result in fines of 4% of annual global turnover or 20 million euros, whichever is larger. GDPR requires consent for gathering data, which must be granted by the user and the request must be clearly presented, meaning it can't be obscured behind legal language. GDPR also requires issuing breach notifications. If a data breach happens, that is, someone who shouldn't has obtained your data and this breach is likely to, here I'm quoting the legislation, result in a risk to the rights and freedoms of individuals, data processors must issue a notification within 72 hours of first having become aware of the breach. GDPR grants users rights over their personal data, including the right to access, meaning that data subjects can obtain confirmation from the data controller, for example, Facebook or the University of Exeter, as to whether or not personal data concerning them is being processed, where and for what purpose. The controller also has to provide a copy of the personal data free of charge in an electronic format on request. GDPR also ensures the right to be forgotten. Data subjects can have the data controller erase their personal data, there are conditions for this though, for example, if the data is no longer relevant or no longer being used for its original purpose. For data analysts, another key GDPR issue is privacy by design. Privacy by design means that data protection is considered from the very beginning of the design of databases and data processing systems. Data protection should not be tacked on as an afterthought. GDPR calls for data controllers, that is you and your organization, to hold and process only the data absolutely necessary and give analysts access to personal data on a need to know basis. This is called data minimization. This means when you design a system, say a customer database, you have to design it on the basis of GDPR legislation. That is, you should be able to delete user records completely, you should be able to pull out user information, everything should be thoroughly encrypted, and users should only be able to see what they need to see. Think about Uber's God's view that we mentioned earlier and how many of these rules that it violates. Let's look at some simple examples. My company, based in Singapore, sells widgets to customers in Scandinavia. Does GDPR apply to me? The answer here is yes. GDPR applies to all companies operating in the EU, even if they're not located physically in the EU. In this example, say I used a list of my Facebook friends and their friends to map out my social network. Does GDPR apply? If I'm doing it for personal use, then the answer is no, but if I'm doing it for some other purpose, like marketing, then yes. Finally, let's imagine that the University of Exeter is using my student data as part of a study on gender disparity in computer science. Can I stop them? Under GDPR, the provisions for data processing for things like marketing are stricter than for other purposes. So for example, when processing data for statistics and scientific or historical research, like performing an academic study or doing journalism, there may be what's called a legitimate interest. This is a flexible definition that usually applies when data processing has some clear benefit to the public or the subject, there's little risk to their privacy, and the data subject could reasonably expect that their data would be used in this way. So something like statistics on gender disparity in computer science would likely fall in this category. There's also another category where data processing has what's called substantial public interest. There are a large number of conditions for this, there are 23 in fact, and the examples are what you would expect from calculating insurance claims to preventing crime. In any of these cases, an organization, like a university, can be exempt from some conditions of GDPR. In this case, the university might argue that this research was related to equality of opportunity and treatment, which is one of the conditions for being of substantial public interest. There are other examples like investigative journalism or as an exercise of official authority, like a police investigation, where if the organization can prove that they have compelling legitimate grounds that override your interests, rights, and freedoms, they can process your data over your objections. To summarize, data processing within academic or other public bodies often has more exemptions and somewhat less strict controls. Commercial organizations can have legitimate interests, 
but it's more likely that they will require explicit consent from the user, hence the much lengthier terms and conditions on websites since 2018, and also why many US-based organisations did, and some still do, simply opt not to provide their service in the EU. By now though, most have opted to add terms and conditions to their sites as the initial panic over GDPR has subsided. You should keep GDPR at the forefront of your mind, especially at the design stage of any new project, and most especially if you work for a commercial organisation that is involved in collecting personal data.